This session is about life cycle management, and I've got a couple of guest speakers up here with me. Um, safe harbor statement, read this, five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> hey, I'm Wendy Busaith. I am a uh, sales engineer for Okta. I've been at Okta about a year and a half now. I'm a remote employee, which means I work from my home, and I live in beautiful um, Utah. See a few familiar faces from Utah out there. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'd like to introduce my customer guest speakers. Um, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Great. I'm Robert Taylor. I'm the Vice President of Technology for Hendrick Automotive Group. Uh, we're based in Charlotte, North Carolina, where it's snowing in April. I'm not entirely sure how that happens, but um, <laughs> we're really excited to be here. And I'm Amy Frost. I'm the Director of IT Engineering for Hendrick Automotive Group. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So as I said, we're talking about lifecycle management today. Uh, for those of you who are new to this, lifecycle management is the process of maintaining the lifecycle of a user account as it goes um, from onboarding through role changes and then, of course, through termination. And that is across all sorts of different systems and applications like directories, uh, et cetera. So today we'll be going through a use case that Hendrick Automotive Group has implemented within their company, and I'll talk to you a little bit about the Okta functionality around lifecycle management. So why is lifecycle management a difficult thing to solve? I'm um, going to talk about a few use cases, the first of which is that a lot of companies started 10 to 15 years ago when Active Directory or other LDAP directories were kind of the basis for a rudimentary identity management system. Uh, but those types of directories were not ones that were built for today's environment, where we are constantly picking up new applications in the cloud, where single sign-on is an absolute must, because now instead of having four or five main applications, users have hundreds of different applications that they're interfacing with each day. So Active Directory has really hung on. Most companies have Active Directory behind their systems. And uh, because it really was not built to interface with cloud applications, there is kind of a, a difficulty of, of, of moving. A second thing that's really difficult about life cycles is that um, integrating HR with IT is often difficult. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one of the main reasons is that HR people and IT people often have different goals. They often have different problems that they're trying to solve. And of course, they've got different systems, different software that they're trying to integrate. And there's often kind of a political battle between those two teams. And, and I'm sure uh, you guys probably experienced that when you started to roll out Okta. Um, M&A, so mergers and acquisitions and divestitures, things like that really cause an upheaval among your identity management system as it exists today. So uh, three main problems here could be if you acquired a new company, um, how do you handle the identities from your existing company and the new company? And um, often we will do things like migrate um, the acquired AD into our existing AD. That, that can be a very troublesome problem. The other thing that we could do would be to create a greenfield AD for us and migrate both user populations up into the new AD that's, that's greenfield. Um, and, and there are a lot of trade-offs between how we do this. So some companies will take the third option, which is to establish a trust between those two AD for us, which can be a really messy process no matter which one of the three that you have chosen to do. Another thing that causes lifecycle management to be difficult is handling distributed offices. So especially in the case where you have had mergers and acquisitions, you've got offices around the United States. You might have offices around the world. You've got different IT people in those offices. You've got different HR processes in those different offices. You've got firewalls to traverse. You've got latency. You've got distance between the people that are trying to work together. So you have connectivity issues. Like I said, you have to tra traverse the firewall. You've got latency. Sometimes you're traveling thousands of miles between offices. You've got multiple sources of truth. So you have maybe end user portals that have a user store for your end users. You've got an identity management system. You've got an active directory or an LDAP directory storing users. You've got HR tools that might be the source of your users. So these multiple sources of truth, how do you rationalize all of those things? How do you bring them into a single pane of glass 
where you can manage those users, you can manage the onboarding, the offboarding, the role changes, et cetera. And then, of course, you've got varied business processes. So you have HR wanting to run the business in a certain way. You've got IT wanting to run the business in a different way. Um, you've got the business side saying, hey, we can't spend this much money on IT, but we need you to solve the problems that we have with manual provisioning and things like that. So the solutions that we have are not really ideal. You can either hire a whole bunch of people to do these things like account creations and account moves and account deletions manually sitting behind a keyboard, right? But that takes a lot of full-time employees and that's very costly. You can also um, do a provisioning via the legacy IDM systems, but those legacy IDM systems are extremely hard to set up. They require a lot of on-prem infrastructure. They're extremely difficult to upgrade. And it's also really hard to get those integrations um, configured so that you're actually taking uh, some ROI out of the purchase of those really monolithic old IDM products. So a lot of companies over the years have taken a large effort to write down these complex workflows. And they put a group of people in a room for a week or two or three, and they come up with these extremely complex workflows to implement. Then they buy a large monolithic IDM platform and try to get all of this inputted into that tool. And uh, throughout my career, which has been a long time, um, working at several different identity management companies, I've had customers that have taken up to two years just to get their workflow implemented within the IDM tool. So if you quantify that pain, and of course everybody brings that down to a dollar sign, um, if you look at it this way, so let's say you're paying an application admin about uh, $50 an hour and you have the average time per manual user management activity, so creating a user, deleting a user, takes about 15 minutes. That brings our cost for provisioning event to about $12.50. And let's say you had 800 of those provisioning events. That means the total cost of provisioning per enterprise app per year can be $10,000. Now this is for a small company, and for larger companies that have 11,000 users, this is a lot larger number. Then if you look at it from the legacy IDM solution standpoint, um, the costs even grow more. So you've got professional services that is almost absolutely necessary for you to bring in a team of people to implement those legacy solutions. That can cost $50,000 just on a one time. Then you have um, the integrations need to be updated. So not only are your applications changing to new versions and you're acquiring new applications, but the identity management platform, um, that's changing as well. So you have to make sure that you keep on updating that and reintegrating for your, your new apps. The annualized cost of services there could be $16,000 or more. And then you have to have that maintenance that's ongoing for each connector to the different applications that you're integrating with. So the total cost there could be $17,000. And again, it's going to be a much larger cost if you've got a very complex system if you have a lot of applications, if you have a lot more users. So when you boil down what does it take to have a successful lifecycle management tool in place, it really comes down to this flow. So you have to onboard the user somehow. So that's step one. Um, that's sourcing the user from somewhere. And that somewhere could be an HR system. It could be a directory. It could be a database you could have end users entering their own information and doing a self-service registration. Um, you could have a manager inputting that information manually, or you could have even a social login where new employees log in with their Facebook account and that information is consumed into the system. Those are all things that Okta can support as a source for that identity onboarding. Secondly, you will need to assign resources. So assigning resources can, can be a birthright access process. So Every user will get these three applications, for instance, an email or something like that. And then on top of that, you can allow end users to do self-service access requests. So you can publish a list of applications that your end users can say, yeah, I'm going to need that one. And it will go through an approval process to allow that person to have the app. Then you're going to have these processes repeating. So steps three, four, and five you might need to suspend a user. That could be due to a perceived security event. That could be because someone maybe goes on personal leave or maternity leave. 
Um, then you might need to renew that access once the security event is over or that person comes back from leave. And then role changes. So if somebody changes from sales to marketing or is promoted from a you know, lower level position to a vice president position, all of these three steps are going to happen more than once and, and possibly, you know, if, if that person is at the company for 20 or 30 years, like a lot of the people at Hendrick Automotive Group are, um, when those people move from different roles, they're accumulating rights and access the entire time that they're at that company. So, you know, Robert and Amy, who've been there for 17 years, might have the keys to the kingdom at that point if their access isn't being revoked appropriately as they change roles within the company. So finally, step number six is that offboarding process. So the offboarding process is probably the most important process here because if you offboard people and you don't appropriately uh, limit their access and remove that access, then you've got a problem, right? So you've heard many headlines in the newspapers these days talking about people who have been fired or have left the company but still retained access to those important systems. And that's why it is so important to make sure that that process is automated and it's not a human error type of thing where somebody could accidentally forget to remove access to a certain account. So walking through the employee life cycle with Okta. So Okta supports what we call um, our advanced mastering, which means that we can take a source of information like Workday, um, like namely UltiPro, SAP, Bamboo HR, so any of these HR tools where the user account really originates, where when somebody is hired, this is where their first name, last name, address, phone number is inputted. So rather than duplicating that manual data entry and having somebody type that into Active Directory, um, Okta can automate the entire process. So as a user is inputted into those tools, they will be basically sucked into Okta. And from there, once they're in Okta, then Okta will handle the provisioning of all of those applications and rights and even creating an Active Directory account in Active Directory for that user. So once that process is done, we can even write back to the original HR tool. So we could um, create, the, create the account in Active Directory and then an email address is then formed within Active Directory and we can write that information back all the way to the master, so to Workday in this case. Then we have the user profile updates. It's really the same system. So when that change is made within the HR tool, it's automatically imported into Okta and automatically updates the permissions within the downstream applications that, that we're integrated with. And for user termination, which is, like I said, the most important one, of course, same thing happens. The user is deactivated within the HR system, automatically in real time deactivated within Okta and then also within the downstream systems. And during the demonstration provided by Hendrick Automotive Group, we'll see how fast that can actually happen. So if you have a termination event where you're actually firing somebody, their access can be cut off automatically within a number of seconds. So um, nobody can attest to the fact that Okta just does what it says it's going to do better than a customer that has actually rolled out this functionality. And Hendrick Automotive Group is one of those. They're one of our oldest customers for lifecycle management. And I've invited them here today to give a demonstration of how they do it at their company. And uh, we'll have uh, a period of time at the end for questions. So if there are any of you that are going through the same type of a, a rollout or uh, thinking about it, these guys are a great resource to kind of bounce ideas off of. So I'll turn it over to Robert and Amy. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah, so um, first, thank you for uh, letting us come and, and speak and kind of show off what, what we've done, uh, you know, over, over at Hendrick Automotive Group. So to provide a little bit of background information uh, for those of you that may not be aware of who we are, uh, we are the uh, largest privately held automotive retailer in the United States. Uh, we operate in, in 14 different states in the continental United States, and uh, we have 52 members of the IT department that support over 11,000 employees in the organization. Uh, for scale, um, just so you can understand what, what we deal with on a daily basis, our company will sell uh, roughly 300,000 vehicles uh, this year, and more importantly, we'll service a uh, little over 3 million vehicles that come through our shop. So it's an incredibly busy um, uh, process and industry that uh, we have to try and manage all from Charlotte. 
Yep, and our, our journey with Okta really began about six years ago, um, almost as a surprise. We decided at that point to take our, I believe over 100 at the time, independent HR systems and consolidate them all into Workday. Um, what we wanted to do is actually be able to make slides like this and answer the question of how many employees do we have without running a report 100 times. Workday has been awesome for that. Um, but when Workday came in, the first demo they showed our company, and, then, and you know, a sales engineer comes in, he opens his laptop, he puts it on the screen, he starts to log in, and he logs into this tool called Okta. And we see the screen immediately where all his apps are provisioned and waiting for him, and we say, whoa, let's stop talking about Workday and look at what this can do for us at the same time. Um, you know, one of our concerns when we consolidated the payroll system is that, you know, we're, we're adding a new place for all of our employees to clock in and out. How do we integrate their sign-on so that they are familiar with the same way to log into their computer, and that they log into Workday, that it's as easy and low barrier to entry as possible? Okta was the answer to that. But on the IT side, selfishly, it was the answer to getting us out of those manual processes you were talking about. We were firmly in the manual do it ourselves, um, have an employee churn through every single new account creation and provisioning of all of our accounts. It took a lot of time and more concerning for us was we didn't feel like we were always getting the right information fast enough, we weren't being accurate. So that was what, um, that's where we saw the vision of Okta and what we thought it could do for us. So we jumped all in on provisioning um, day one. Um, so we started with the very easy apps with Workday integration, we had some box accounts, we started with that. Um, we expanded it though. We've also had some of our automotive specific vendors write integrations into Okta for us so that we can really offer our employees access to everything through Okta. Even our internally developed apps, things that we host ourselves, these are all written in Ruby, Clojure, things like that. Those all integrate into Okta as well, um, and most of them for provisioning and deprovisioning. So it's, it's really made our lives very easy. We churned through about, I think we, th about 150 provisioning, deprovisioning events a week. It's quite a bit. It's not something we could keep up with the way we were doing it before. Yeah, needless to say, our Workday rep was not thrilled when he came in to pitch his product and all we wanted to talk about was Okta yeah. uh, for an hour. We're like, yeah, 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 we get why we're sold on common yeah. payroll. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Help us figure <laughs> this other problem this. out. Yes. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is um, take you through an entire hiring, uh, provisioning, and, and deprovisioning process. So uh, to set the stage a little bit here, uh, for those of you that uh, are familiar with Workday, you'll recognize, uh, obviously, the homepage for Workday. Uh, Christina Darby is one of our Workday uh, administrators and HR professionals at Hendrick, and she's going to go through and uh, hire an employee. We have an approved job requisition at this point, and we have a candidate that's in the pre-hire state. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, Christina is going to go through and uh, start to hire uh, Dave Matthews, who's going to come and be a salesperson at Hendrick. Uh, for transparency's sake, we're going to take you through the entire uh, Workday HR uh, hiring process. So you'll see all the steps and, and see that we're not making this up as, as we go along. I'll also mention, all the videos that we're about to show you were, this is the, we shot it one time, so you'll see some random mouse movements, there's really no editing in any of it. Uh, we tried to be as, as honest and truthful in the process as we can here. So Christina is going to get started, and she's going to go through and uh, find this. Uh, and so this is um, maybe a little slow, could we get a faster speed on? Yes. Ludicrous speed, go! HR could run that fast every day. <laughs> what a relief. I was hoping Spaceballs would get an applause. So thank you for uh, uh, doing that for us. Um, yeah, 
And nothing uh, typically happens that fast, but when you go to Plaid, it's amazing what you can, it is. What you can do. <laughs> and again, all that work was done by HR. IT has not logged in to do anything unless they're the ones hiring somebody. That's right. Um, so now we have a, an, a hired a worker in Workday, and uh, it's gone ahead and, and made a call out to Okta to begin the provisioning process for all of those downstream apps. So here, uh, one of our uh, help desk associates, Vicki Rich, uh, she's going to log in to uh, Okta here and uh, take care of a couple of other little housekeeping items. And she's using Okta because we also have it integrated with Zendesk. Um, it's our ticketing system we use for help desk, but also facilities and other requests. Um, the way we have this uh, structured, we still do have some QA we do on accounts not totally necessary for everybody. It's something we've chosen to do. But we have Okta going ahead and creating a ticket in Zendesk for us every time an account's created. It also um, puts the user in a AD automatically. They're in the right OU already. Vicky just opens up the account, and I think she adds some legacy groups that we don't have um, structured enough to really automate where they go. Um, but the ticket she has that Okta has created already has all the HR reps copied on the ticket, the hiring manager. So once she does her QA, closes that ticket, we're done in IT. We've distributed all the information, we've communicated to all the necessary people, and that employee is ready to start work. Yeah. You know, the, the neat thing about it is that when we were putting this video together, we were talking with uh, uh, our, our IT operations team about the workflows and the processes. And, and they made a pretty profound statement. They said in, in five years, they have not created a single Active Directory account on their own, which I think is pretty amazing considering where we were. You know, the, the day before we turned it on, we were doing everything manually, and now we really don't do anything in Active Directory anymore. And it's, it's more accurate and more timely than, than we were ever doing it in the past. Yeah. So now, uh, from an IT perspective, we're done. Um, the, uh, tickets been closed and the hiring managers received the login information for Dave Matthews and uh, he's ready to go. So uh, now Dave is going to show up for work and he's going to log in at his orientation um, with his password that was automatically set up. He's going to create a new password. And then another key piece here which has really been a boon for us is that he uh, enrolls in password self-service and password reset processes. So again, it's, it's eliminating a uh, call to the help desk whenever they lock out their account, they can go in and manage it themselves. Were you also able to provision him prior to his arriving the first day? Did you set a, we do. Like a two week time interval? Yep. Yep. 14 days. So here he's logged into Workplace and um, you know, because he was a member of the IT group, he's automatically put into the uh, information technology workplace group, and he can go in and see all of the information that uh, has already been posted in there and, and be brought up to speed with what's happening in our department, you know, right from here. And it's, you guys wouldn't notice this, but actually we can, this is our real information. We have an employee that's already on the screen when we made the video two weeks ago that yeah. just started for work today. So he's already in the right organization. He's already provisioned and ready to go when he sits down for work the first day. So now we'll jump over to Box. Uh, again, it's provisioned an account. And because of uh, his access in the IT department, he already has access to uh, the department listing and, and folders that are shared uh, common across the, uh, the department. And then the big one for us, Amy, obviously, is Office 365. Yeah, we do require all of our, or HR requires all of our employees to have an email address. So we are um, tasked with making sure that those get provisioned when somebody starts work. And we also have the added complexity of assigning two different forms of licensing in Microsoft. We have a mix of E3s and E1s, so we can keep our costs down. Um, so we've got all of that process built in as well to use the information on, um, I think it's job profile that we pull out of Workday to decide who needs a real, you know, full version of Office and who just needs an email address to get down to their job. So. Yeah. You know, for us and, and what you just saw in that demo is, is what we do every single day. And uh, the power of, of the connection between Workday and Okta, we have one source of truth about employees in our organization and it's Workday. Uh, we have one tool that provisions access for all of those applications, and that's Okta. Uh, and it creates a seamless user experience. And you know, as we've gone down this journey for the last six years, our executive team, and, and as uh, new departments are coming up with new ideas and new applications, they're going and saying to their partners, 
does it integrate with Okta? We have them you know, conditioned now, that's one of the first questions, and then they say, if it doesn't, then it needs to, because we're not gonna be able to deploy it unless it does. And so we've really seen a very widespread adoption with it. That's awesome, thank you guys. Yeah, unfortunately, you can clap well, now if you want to, that's fine too. Because termination is sad, we won't yeah, clap for termination. But termi yeah, we gotta clap for terminating an employee. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. You know, so unfortunately, uh, Dave is probably not cut out for sales. Yeah, better at music. Better at music. Okay. Um, so uh, now Christina Darby, she's going to log back in and uh, go through the termination process. She's our HR rep, so she can fire people in, in Workday. Also, the manager that's closest to the firing event has terminating event. Is the <laughs> HR way of saying it. <laughs> they have the, the right to do this as well. Yeah. We should probably make it more steps to terminate somebody so that... No, 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 it's super easy. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's this is a, the, the type of termination we're putting in here, we have, obviously there's voluntary termination, somebody's resigning, you can put those in immediately and then Okta will take that and schedule it. So you can put it in the day they turn in their notice, two weeks later their account will be deprovisioned right when you need it to be. In this case, we have an involuntary termination and we have a workflow set up in Workday so that if it sees the flag for involuntary and it sees that the person is, we have a checkbox that says not eligible for rehire, which usually means somebody are walking out of the building, that will also automatically trigger a real-time sync event that will go in and immediately disable everything in Okta. Um, the other ones just happen at midnight on the day that you plan to terminate the person. Yeah, that's right. So uh, now Dave has been fi uh, fired. He's been terminated in, in Workday. And as you can see from the log, uh, Workday sent a, a real-time sync request to Okta at uh, 11.07.34 on March the 26th uh, to, uh, to terminate uh, Dave Matthews, sadly. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll log back into Okta uh, and uh, we'll see it here. And this is something, this is where you could pull this to show an audit log or, you know, pull whatever you want to do to verify that the termination has happened the way you planned. I'm just happy I typed my password correctly on the Correct. first try. <laughs> uh, That's the hard part. Yeah. So now uh, we'll go into the directory. Obviously, everybody here should be familiar with this screen in Okta. We're going to look for Dave Matthews, and we see that his account has already been uh, deactivated because of that real-time sync uh, that came over from Workday. And this demo is pretty real time um, in the flow of how fast it comes in from Workday. Yeah. All of his apps have been uh, deprovisioned uh, within there. You can go through and see some of the profile information that comes over uh, on his account from, uh, from Workday as well. And there's obviously additional attributes as well that I think can come in from all the different sources of truth that, that you were talking about earlier, Wendy. Yeah. So now uh, the, the most important part here, when we look at the log file, and I think this is a really telling uh, element when you look at the log file, you can see that he's been deprovisioned from all of those business apps that, that he was originally set up for. Uh, he was deprovisioned from Workplace, from Office 365, from uh, Workday itself, uh, Box, and even our internal applications. And just to overlay that log information with the termination process event that we had out of Workday, it was eight seconds um, that it took from the time the real-time sync fired till all of his account access has been removed. Um, and again, that was with no interaction with IT. We never got a call. We, um, we have a courtesy uh, summary report that HR sends us every week to kind of give us an idea of how many de you know, terminations have happened, but we never interact with them anymore, so. Well, we still talk to them. <laughs> Depends. Yeah. <laughs> We just need tickets. I mean. That's right. But it, it's a pretty powerful statement. You know, we never could have done this within eight seconds doing it manually. And, uh, and it gives us a tremendous amount of time back to go and focus on other things versus these, these sort of tasks of, mm -hmm. um, you know, provisioning applications and deprovisioning applications. Yep. And the security, too. We, we do probably have, you know, we have over 100 general managers. We have almost that many HR managers. They may not have all notified us as evenly <laughs> as we would have liked to. Um, that never happens. Yes, to tell us that people are terminated. Yeah. So, so again, uh, it, it uh, of just it was an incredible journey to go on. I, you know, I was cringing a little bit, rethinking about everything that we were doing as you were going through the presentation earlier, because we were in that exact same spot. You know, we had all those disconnected systems. We had all those challenges of trying to do things manually and provision things and deprovision them. Um, now we, you know, focus on other things. 
Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So no better testimonial than that, right? Um, so to, to summarize, I wanted to go through a few of the functionalities that Okta offers, some that might be newer for existing customers. Um, so the real basis behind Okta is allowing you to connect to everything. And how we do that is by a system of agents. So we have an Active Directory agent. We have an LDAP agent. We have SKIM agents. We have all of these standards-based things that will allow us to basically consume um, identities from all of these different sources. And we can even pull identities in through just a, a regular CSV file. So um, once we have the identities within Okta, and that could be from multiple different sources, right? So you could have four or five different Active Directory domains that you want to integrate into a single pane of glass. We pull all of those into Okta, and from there, we can use our, our catalog of out-of-the-box integrations, right? So Okta has 200 or more that support provisioning out of the box. We have 6,000 or more that support single sign-on out of the box. And when I say out of the box, that means there is zero coding. There is almost no configuration. You literally check a few check boxes, click a couple next buttons, and you are integrated with the application. So um, we provide this really easy provisioning. You can see an example here on the left where all you have to do is select enable to turn on things like create a user within the integrated system, update the user when a profile attribute changes, delete or disable that user when they are disabled in the master source, which could be Workday, which could be Active Directory, which could be an LDAP directory, which could be any application really that supports provisioning into Okta. And then you can also create a profile master, as these guys did with Workday, um, where they are saying, uh, the information is being imported into Okta. You can't change it within Okta because it's mastered within this external profile master. Then on the right-hand side, you can see we also have granular options for what can you do with that user once it is pulled into Okta. So when a user is deactivated in the app, like Workday, what do you do in Okta? Do you do nothing? Do you deactivate the user? Do you suspend the user? So we have really fine-grained access controls on both sides, both pulling in and um, pushing out of Okta. As we mentioned, we can do profile mastering. So in this list here is an example of profiles that are being pulled into Okta from these disparate sources. So we've got an Active Directory, we've got an LDAP directory, and we've got a Workday, which is UltiPro, so an HR tool. Um, and you can order those in the order of preference. And not only can you do that, but you can also do attribute level mastering. So you can say, I'd like to pull user's first name and last name and phone number out of Workday or Active Directory. But I would like to pull their email address out of a different source. Maybe that's Active Directory or um, Office 365, for instance. A newer technology that we are announcing this year at Octane is import hooks. So import hooks allow you to take a stop in the process of pulling that user into Okta and reach out to other things to do more processing before you complete the process of, of putting that user into Okta's universal directory. So that can help you do things like the following. You can enrich a user profile. So let's say you've got a database out there somewhere that is storing things about the user, like maybe uh, entitlement information or a, a user identification number or something like that. You can reach out to that database and enrich that user profile with the information from the database before you write it to Okta. You can also do things like resolve naming con conflicts. So if you have two John.Smiths, what do you do with them, right? And so at that point, you can call out to an external process, perform a calculation, and maybe give a John Smith 2 uh, so that you don't have those naming conflicts. Additionally, you can clean up data. So let's say in Workday, you're storing a user's phone number with parentheses and dashes, but you have some downstream applications that do not like parentheses and dashes in the phone number. So you can use this import hook to call out, do a script evaluation of that phone number, remove the parentheses and dashes, and then put it into Okta. We also provide workflows to assign and change access. And since Okta is a a rules-based access control um, product where we use groups for most of that uh, logic. 
what you can do is you can create rules like the following. So you can say um, maybe the user's title, if it contains sales, I'm going to automatically put that person into a group called sales. And that will enable that sales group to be the provisioning um, policy to give the user access to sales types of applications and to give salespeople maybe additional layers of security around multi-factor and things like that. We also have automated actions based upon conditions now. So for instance, I've created a rule here that will disable users after 30 days of inactivity. So you can see on the left, uh, there's going to be a check that is provided, and it's going to check only the group contractors to see when they logged in last. And if that specific user hasn't logged in for 30 days, you can see on the right that they were, we're going to change their Okta status to deactivated. So that will keep the user within the Okta directory so you've not lost them, but it does actually turn off their access to any of the applications that they had access to before. We also offer the ability to do access requests. So we can publish a nice catalog of the applications that your company sanctions and then allow your users to peruse that catalog. And if there's an application that they feel they need, they can add it to their own dashboard themselves, or if you've turned on the request approval flow, it will force them to click the request button. There will be an automatic email that's sent to the approver for that application. Once the approver says, yes, I do believe that user needs it by clicking the approve button, then this workflow will automatically flow through where that user will be provisioned the application and they will be able to single sign into that application. And then on the right, you can see that all of that is audited in our system log. So as you guys were saying, if you have an auditor coming on site and you need to prove who has access to what, who decided to give them access to that application, all of that can be found by doing very granular searches within the system log. And we also have canned reports that you can just say, what does Bill have access to? And it will print you out of a list of all of the different applications. So the takeaways from this session, I hope that all of you have learned that Okta is a lot more than single sign-on. Okta um, was originally founded because our founders realized that as we're moving to the cloud, there are a lot of barriers to getting from Active Directory or an LDAP directory into those applications in the cloud. And so it started out with single sign-on and provisioning lifecycle management in mind. And over the years, we have gotten a lot more sophisticated with both our single sign-on methods as well as our provisioning methods. And we have extremely strong partnerships with other companies like Workday, where we can um, have them writing software that integrates into Okta. So for the real-time sync that was performed with you guys, that's actually code in the Workday software itself that's calling out to Okta. And because Okta is best of breed, um, we have a lot of traction in getting best of breed software companies to integrate natively with our product. And that is why Okta's integrations are really much stronger than those of our competition. So we provide these out of the box workflows, which are extremely easy to configure and they just work because we have these best of breed companies that continue uh, to keep our partnerships very alive. Um, we're constantly being notified by them. Hey, we made a code change. You guys might need to make a code change on your side. So um, we, are, we are very, very um, in touch with what's happening with all the applications that we integrate with. Um, and of course, the greatest thing is there's no need to code. So all of it is just point, click, turn that feature on, and you're ready to go. Um, so we did leave a few minutes for questions. So there is somebody with a microphone running around back there. If you could wait and raise your hand, um, they'll run up to you. There's one up, up in the front here. Hi, thank you. Um, regarding Workday as a master, uh, there are certain events in Workday that uh, I have some familiarity with implementing it for Okta, and there are some events in Workday that we have found on our side um, traditionally very hard to manage, preferably, uh, most notably, anything regarding the rescind fun function. So in Workday, you can rescind pretty much every single event that you do. Uh, you can rescind a new hire, you can rescind a rehire, you can backdate a hire. Uh, how does, uh, is there anything on Okta's roadmap for handling those problems as it can result in 
um, and contractor conversions, uh, those types of events where it can result in termination of access if somebody on the HR side of things isn't aware of what they input and how it's going to impact downstream IT systems. So I think a lot of that goes probably goes down to training, right? To making sure that the Workday admins kind of know what they're doing. Um, but yes, we are evaluating constantly uh, any type of, of change that happens on the Workday side. Um, Okta is working very closely with, with Workday to keep those integrations up to date. As far as rescind goes, um, I, I, I'm sure that there are things in the works now as I've looked through our uh, JIRAs uh, regarding that. We are definitely working on improving the functionality for rescind within Workday, so that, that will be coming out down the line at some point. Do you guys have any issues with, with rescinding? I, I'm not sure if, how you guys might have handled We that. have more issues, I'd, I'd say, with the contractor conversion. That's a big issue that we encounter. Um, I don't have the, um, I don't have the um, technical information on it, but there was actually somebody, our rep mentioned to us this year that there was something coming that would help us with that. So that's definitely something we should follow up on. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge, there's no question. Yeah. Um, the, you know, going from a contingent worker to a full-time employee, we have that challenge. Uh, we, we also, uh, to Wendy's point, some of it is education, uh, where uh, we have people that are transferring from one dealership to the other, and, and somebody just goes in and they don't understand the transfer process, so they terminate. They're like, oh, you know, this person's going over here, so I'm going to terminate them. And it's like, no, please don't do that. You know? Yeah, I know out of the box, and this is fairly new to Okta, maybe within the last year we do support converting from a part-time or a contractor mm -hmm. to a full-time employee. So that might be something that you haven't rolled out yet within your deployment. Um, but there's a lot of information on the documentation side about that because it is a new feature. Yeah, it is, it's, it is pretty new because it's something we're excited about but haven't yet rolled yeah. out either. So. Yeah. Any other couple back here? So uh, I wanted to see if you can elaborate a little bit uh, into the tr uh, challenges you have from contract conversion. We kind of are dealing with that, um, but we don't have, you know, the, this module of Okta yet. Uh, ours is more of an internal process um, for Oracle, um, but I wanted to see what, you're, what you have to say about that. So if we, is the question whether we integrate with Oracle for? Uh, no, no. Uh, your specific challenges into the contract of conversion uh, from an employee, from a contractor to employee, or even vice versa. Yeah, so I think what was happening um, when a contractor, the way our HR was putting it in Workday, when our contractors would convert, they would essentially, the contractor would essentially in Okta terminate mm -hmm. and then get recreated. And obviously if they're, doing their job and have their email and everything you'd like them to keep everything the same way. So um, so there was a change in our HR process so that they're alerting us and it's not terminating anymore. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that, that is the challenge that we were dealing with with that. So I assume that's probably the same. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely on the business side, the, the business yeah. logic in the tool uh, and, the, and what was triggering those pushes into Okta. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was almost as if it were triggering it as, as a termination and hire event instead of a you know, profile change or something to that effect. Which I so. think in our legacy um, HR system was before Workday was what they had to do. So. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that is exactly the same issue we're having is when somebody would get, it, instead of doing a conversion, it would do a termination, the person would lose all their access, then we have to re, uh, reprovision their access. So similar yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and the I, other issues, I think that some of the, in, Workday specifically, your employee number changes when you convert from a contractor to oh. an employee. So that's another mapping those together is mm -hmm. also. And I think it was also a, a link with uh, uh, the HR teams uh, of changing workflow processes without necessarily letting the downstream application people know that those processes were changing. So it always sort of came as a surprise. And that, for, that forced us to be more in line with our change control process. Regarding uh, deprovisioning with Office 365, can Okta reclaim the license from that user and uh, also legal hold? Possibly? Yes. So yes, Okta can um, delete the, the license and put it back in the pool automatically. Mm -hmm. And we have that set in ours. Um, we're leaving the license assigned to the deactivated user for seven days in case we have 
that request that always comes for access to that employee's email a couple of days later, and then we have an automation that's taking it out after seven days. So we know we know we're floating a few extra licenses for that, but yeah. it does. Really happen. exciting part, though, from a licensing perspective, is in the past we would we would overbuy on specific licenses because we didn't know what the person was really going to do. Now, you know, through our integration, we're able to say this, this person with this type of job profile gets an E1 license, and this type of person with this type of profile gets an E3 license. And so we're really able to right size our license management within Office Research. And then there's great auditing through the, audit, through the Octa tool that will say, you know, you have 70 license, uh, uh, E3 licenses, but only 42 people have logged in this month. So it does help you to keep track of those licenses and maybe, maybe not have to buy as, quite as many and get some money back. Yeah. Uh, we use uh, Greenhouse onboarding and Greenhouse recruiting as our onboarding and recruiting systems and integrate with Okta. So not integrate with Okta yet, but do you have anything on your roadmap uh, to integrate those two systems with Okta as our source of truth, per se? I, I didn't quite catch that. Okay, so instead of Workday, we use uh, both Greenhouse recruiting and onboarding to onboard, oh, for recruit Greenhouse? and onboard employees. Is there anything on your roadmap to create a workflow or a pipeline where these two in systems can be integrated with Okta for automation, provisioning, and deprovisioning? So imagine Workday, so replace uh, Workday with GHO and GHR. That, um, I'm not sure. Let's uh, come up to me afterward and I'll give you my card and I'll take an action item to, to look into that for you. There's a question up here, third row. I think this will have to be the last question. It looks like we're about out of time. Hey, let me um, pull this up real quick. I, mine is kind of twofold, but it's um, basically, you know, understandably with apps that do provisioning, um, obviously they're gonna, things will be deactivated. Let me back up. If you're doing SSO only, which some of our apps are, mm -hmm. um, things will be deactivated, but you still have an account in existence on the other end. Correct. And then um, the other half of that is like, say for example, um, we use G Suite, so uh, tokens that are you know, on all the personal devices, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys do as far as cleaning up those accounts after the fact? Is that a manual process? Is it something you audit? Um, as far as the long-lived tokens? So what we really, you know, because we, we are kind of the front door and we do grant access to get into that, to authenticate the first time, but a lot of applications like G Suite or even Office 365 or other Microsoft products will create an OAuth token that's sitting there um, it's valid for a month or more. So we encourage our customers to set the time to live on those tokens to be very short, like maybe a day. And that way, if somebody is terminated, we'll at least get them within that one day. Um, but you know, if you turn on the automated provisioning and if you have applications that do support that with Okta, um, that does help in that because you can actually delete the account and um, you won't have that same, same problem. And we have some of the um, issues with applications that will not integrate with um, provisioning at all. Um, and what we've done for those, um, and some of these don't even do single sign-on, but we still want to account for getting people out of those applications. So we, our, our kind of hack on that is to do the same kind of event we showed with the Zendesk ticket that gets created. We have, even though we don't take action at termination on the integrated systems, we have it create a ticket and it sends directly to this application support team that's responsible for that application. It puts in the employee number, which correlates with the user ID in that system, and they get an event, an alert, to tell them to take the person out of that legacy application. And it's, yeah, it's manual, but it's at least um, consistent. And those, those reminders are actually bubbled up to the Okta dashboards. The Okta administrator will see this user has been deprovisioned from an application that doesn't support automatic deprovisioning, but it will give you a notice in the dashboard so that you can assign those to make sure somebody follows up. Yeah, and, and to add on to what Amy was saying, the, on our roadmap to explore is uh, a triggering event on termination that will, in the case of mobile devices, call out to, the, to our MDM that will then uh, either remove the apps or lock the phone, depending on you know, what, what the particular situation is. Yeah. 
Well, I think that's all the time that we have. Could you guys please fill out your surveys? We really appreciated you coming today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Octane. Yep. Thank you.